ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعه ما يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يحسب ما فلا يضل الا نفسه هو الذي ارسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون وقال عز وجل يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون اما بعد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم الحمني جسدي وعزني من شر نفسي امين يا رب Today I want to talk about a topic that is very delicate a topic that's very subtle and it's a topic that has over time because of the age of modernity and the way it's affecting the minds of the muslims and the world certain things that were being talked about in our tradition are fading away so i wanted to bring our attention to some of those things some of those realities i have only half an hour so i can't go into a lot of details today but i as a reference i will mention that sheikh ahmed sarhani rahmatullah alayhi has written entire books on this subject that i'm going to talk about today And Imam Shaulila Muhaddas Dilbi rahmatullahi alayhi has also written entire books on this subject. If I was to give a title to my topic today, the title of the topic would be The Relationship Between the Malaika, the Angels, and the Ruh, the Spirit Within. You can say Spirit, soul i don't know what word would be best but i will explain this word ruh first let me define what it means the word ruh comes in quran for four things number 1 and most popular known ruh is referred to the angels تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر. روح is the angels. But Allah سبحانه وتعالى also refers to Himself with the word روح. فنخت فيه من روحي and I blew into Adam from my روح. So it is you can say one of the actions of Allah or the attributes of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. The word ruh also comes in Quran for Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah An-Nahl he says, "Yanzilu al-malaikatu bi ruhi min amri 'ala man yasha'u min 'ibadi." Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings down his ruh meaning the Quran, his ayat, his verses, whoever he likes amongst his servants. So the word ruh is used in Quran so far as I have discussed for three things malaika the angels number 2 for the Quran itself number 3 for Allah himself and number 4 yes aluna ka ani ruh kul aruhu min amri rabbi they ask you about the ruh this is the one that is also commonly known that it's some some you can say entity within us some reality within us if you want to understand this better this ruh that's within us you can say the word in quran for our biological being is nafs 
The word for our biological being in the Quran is nafs. Ya yuhannas inna khalaqnakum min nafsin wahida. O mankind, we created you from one being, one one living biological being. Wa khalaqa minha zawjaha, and then from there we created its mate. Meaning Allah created Adam, from Adam He created Hawa is one meaning. Or Allah created one being, one cell, and then from that one cell came the other cell, the daughter cell. And then from there life started. Ya yuhannas inna khalaqnakum min nafsin wahida wa khalaqna minha zawja. So just as nafs refers to our biological being, ruh refers to our, be, our existence in the other world, which I will discuss. What is that? I have discussed this point before, but I want to elaborate a little bit more. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, He has created two different worlds. Ala lillahi khalqu wal amr. What is the world of amr? You know this world of creation, the world of khalq. <laughs> this world of creation, khalaqa sab'a samawati fi sittati ayyamin. This world of creation took six, you can say, stages. Six days, six stages. So this world, this world of time and space, and you would be surprised when you read the words of works of the great scholars of Islam, even of the past, even 200 years ago. Even read the works of Shawli Ulam at this day, they talk about the time-space continuum as if they are talking about something of t today's world that Einstein would be talking about. But anyway, that aside, because you know when you look at the Quranic terms of Asr, I mean fast speed of time, Dahar is space-time actually, both combined, the fabric of time and space. For to go from here to there, because there's space, there's time, this is understood. Anyway, coming to the main issue. There is the world of Takhliq, the Alim al Khalq, this world that we live in. And in this world, our creation is this body. This is our this is our nafs, you can say. Our the biological being. The bio, the word nafs, by the way, in Arabic literally means to breathe. Nafasa. Nafasa means to breathe. So as long as something is breathing, it's one of the qual one of the I think five or six qualities of a living creature, reproduction and so on and so forth. And one of them is respiration. Respiration is one of the qualities of a, a living thing. Anyway, so in this world you have, in the world of Takhliq, you have your body that breathes. But you have another existence. This is the important point I wanted to say. And then with this, the relationship of the angels to your ruh, what is it? So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when in this other world, Adam and Amr, there's no time space. In this world, if a baby is going to be born, it takes nine months. But in Jannah, if you want something, it's immediate. It's immediate. It's Adam and Amr there. Spontaneous. There's no time space continuum. There's no physical reality as we know it in this world. In this world, everything takes time and space. This is Adam and Khalq. Alim al Amr is that world for which Allah says in Surah Yasin, Inna Amruhu ida arada shay'an fayakulu lahu kun fayakun. When Allah demand, desires something, He says to it be, and it is. That is in that world, Alim al Khal. But Allah's Sunnah in this world is that, like I mentioned, Allah even for His creation, خلق السماء والأرض في ستة أيام. That even in this world, time, the creation of this world took. Not kun fayakun, not be and it is, but it took stages for it to come into existence. Now, there is one part of, you know, man is made of, man has a dual reality. One reality is this world, this is a reality, but the other reality is the other world. And the ruh, the ruh from Allah that is in man, is not of this world of time space continuum, it is from the alimul amr. It is from the world of command. It is from the world where there is no time-space continuum. It is from the world that, you can say, belongs to the other world. It's already within us. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions. When Allah, even before creating this world of takhliq, when Allah had all of the human beings in front of Him, all the human beings, Adam was there, Prophet Muhammad was there, I was there, you were there, we were all there. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alastu bi rabbikum, am I not your Lord? Alubala, yes, you're our Lord. So we were in that, 
you know, in that state, in that life, we were already existing. We were already existing in Alimul Arwah. Before even this whole creation of this Big Bang and everything that happened after it. Even, even before this physical world, that life already existed, but then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put us into sleep. Now, there's a lot of details I'm going to not mention because I'm coming to my main topic that I want to talk about. But the main points I just want to repeat. Number one, there's the world of creation. It takes time and space. There's the world of command. In the world of command, Allah said, be, and then this world of creation became. But in this world of creation, there's time space. So you can say, Alimul Takhliq, Ala Lillahi al wal Amr, Alimul Khal, the world of Takhliq, came into existence from Alimul Amr. Actually, all, all creation comes into existence from Alimul Amr to whatever other dimensions that there may be. Now, even though man today, in the age of modernity is very proud that, oh, you know, man is the apex, man is the climax of God's creation. <laughs> I created man with my two own hands. Even though man is proud that Allah says, <laughs> I have created man in the best of statures. But what this has done as a result also which fades away some realities of our tradition is that it makes us think that maybe angels are not that important. It makes us think, oh, we're greater than angels, we're better than angels, so therefore, what is their purpose? So this is the point that I want to focus on because the importance of angels and their relationship to us and some of the other philosophical aspects that are very important and prominent because of this issue. Like for example, just I will touch upon this very quickly. You know, a lot of people hear this all the time. Oh, why do we live in the world of suffering? You know, why couldn't God have made a perfect world? Why couldn't God have done things better? We hear this all the time. And the Quranic response is, there is a perfect world. It's the world of the angels. There is a world of no suffering. It is the world of the angels. There is already that world that is created that you want to seek. But it is so interesting. It is so interesting that even to the Prophet ﷺ, the mushrikeen used to say, why doesn't Allah send down an angel? Why doesn't Allah send down an angel? Meaning they want a perfect example. Angels have been always been known within all traditions. You know it's so interesting. You go to the earliest human writings, like Homer. Homer is the earliest human writings. Even Homer talks about things like heaven and hell and angels and all this. Anyway, I'm not going to go into this. But the point I'm trying to make is that man thought or man <coughs> thinks he's great. Because he is the climax of Allah's creation, which he is. But I was only mentioning this point about the world of suffering and angels are perfect only as a side point. This is not my topic. But on this, on this point also I want to mention that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created angels in this perfect world. But if you have a perfect world like the angels, then you cannot have ikhtiya, you cannot have khiya, you cannot have freedom of choice. You cannot have freedom of choice. Angels didn't have freedom of choice. Because if the world has to be perfect, then everything has to go by a certain policy, a certain dictate. And over here, notice, in that world, Adam and Amr, things are perfect, Jannah will be perfect. Hell will be the perfect punishment. So on and so forth. But over here, I want you to notice, I mentioned Allah used the word Ruh for Himself. So Allah is Ruh. The angels, Allah has used the word Ruh for them many times in Quran. They are Ruh. The Quran is Ruh. And the Qur'an comes down to the ruh. Just notice this connection. In the same way, just as a side point again, to this point, because I have a lot to say on this subject. This is a very important subject. Allah is nur and nur And malaika are created of nur, light. 
Quran calls itself Nur. Revealed upon Ala Qalbi Muhammad, upon the Nur of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, just as he did dua for himself. So Ruh or Nur. Angels are Ruh. Tatanazzalu alayhimul malaikatu wa Ruhu. Wa ayyadnahum bi Ruh al-Qudus. Allah says for Isa alayhi wa sallam, by the way, I don't know if some people know this, but some of the scholars, they say that one of the miracles of Isa alayhi wa sallam was, and which the Prophet said, you will see. When Isa comes down, you will not see him alone. You will see angels to his life, right and his left. This is the hadith. So it is possible that why Allah always mentions, القدس, anyone who's reading Quran on a regular basis will notice that for Isa والسلام, these words are used and we uh, strengthen him with the Holy Spirit. We strengthen him with the Holy Spirit this, throughout the whole Quran. Perhaps one of the meanings of this is that wherever Isa والسلام, went, the angels were going and people were able to see that this angel is going with Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. Anyway, I don't want this to be the main issue. The main issue is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the perfect world. And man says, why is there suffering? Because in this world that's not perfect. And the angels who are perfect said it. The angels who are perfect, they themselves said it. When Allah says, Inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa, Allah says, I'm going to make a vice regent, a trustee of mine on earth. The perfect creation said, Are you going to create in that world somebody who's going to shed blood and, and, and uh, cause facade? Yafsidu Yafsidu fil ardi wa while we are praising you, Allah, all the time we're praising you, you're going to create this creation. But in Allah's wisdom, this creation, the human creation, even though it can become asfala safirin, the lowest of the low, but there are people like Musa and Isa and Muhammad, <coughs> they're the highest of the high. But how? Now this is the point that I'm actually bringing here. And two things I want to give you an example. I'm going to give you the example of this example and then the, back to the verses that I was just reciting. In Alim, there's Alim al Amr and Alim al Khal. I've discussed this. Some of the scholars of Islam, including Shaulullah, Shaykh Ahmad Sadhani, and others, they say that between these two worlds, there is, seems to be another world, which they have given the name Alim al Mithal. I'll tell you why I'm telling you. Because this heart of ours, it has a link with these other worlds. This is what I want to talk about. So in this Alim al Misal, what is Alim al Misal? Shawulullah Muhaddas Devi defines Alim al Misal as this that things manifest themselves in a world somewhere that angels have access to before they manifest themselves in this world. The example of this, I can't go into details. Again, I'm giving you one example. The example of that is a true dream. The Prophet ﷺ said, true dreams, nothing of the Buah remains except for true dreams. True dreams still remain. Something's going to happen in the future, and an angel comes and gives you the dream. Now that dream of something that was going to happen in the future, where does it come from? Where has it manifested? So that dream comes from Alim al Mithal. This is what Shaulullah understands. This is the understanding of Shaulullah Muhaddis bin Mirakul Ali on this issue. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is something has to already have existence for it to come to your mind. It already has to have existence. And then when that, <coughs> that event comes true in front of you, then that has manifested itself in the physical world. So even the hadith in Sahih Bukhari are very clear about this that shaitan brings you dreams or angels bring you dreams. This is very clear. But there are other, like for example, eating food and you know these, I can't go into interpretation of dreams right now. I'm only mentioning that the angels, they will bring true dreams to somebody from their world to us. You look at the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ in every major occasion, whether it was Badr, whether it was Uhud, whether it was Hudaybiyah, the angels of Allah are mentioned. In every major occasion, the angels of Allah are mentioned. Because there is a link that is very important to understand between the human being and the angels. You know, we get so excited, we want to hear jinn stories. 
You know, we want to hear about jinns, but we don't want to hear about malaika, the angels. Even though they are part of our imaniyat. You know, Allah didn't have to say, you have to believe in the angels. There's so many things to believe in. You know, the iman, imaniyat, the sixth thing, right? And Allah could have said, you have to believe in the Hawl al like the fountain of uh, the fountain that the Prophet will give the drink from that could have been one of the six things. So many things could have been one of the six things. Jannah could have been one of the six things. Jahannam could have been one of the six things. But it's not. Malaika is one of the six things. Because there is a link, the same way, example, another example. How did the <coughs> angels know? One of the explanations. How did the angels know that man will cause corruption in the world? When Allah said, I'm going to make a vice regent on earth, they said, oh, you're going to make him? He's going to cause facet. How did they know? Because things already existed before they manifested themselves. This is also clear in the ayah, by the way, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, again, I don't have time, but Allah says in the Quran where Allah says in Surah Yasin, إِنَّمَا أَمْرُهُ إِذَا أَرَادَ شَيْئًا When Allah decides something to be, فَيَقُولُ لَهُ He says to it, كُنْ فَيَقُولُ Be and it becomes. So it exists. فَيَقُولُ لَهُ He says to it that already exists, be and it becomes. So things exist before they take place. And the relationship between human beings and the events in our lives and the angels and the, the things that have already manifested in another world are, that are yet to be manifested in this world, this is the link. This is the link. Why am I saying this? Before I tell you why I'm saying this, why am I going to why is it important? Before I discuss this, let me summarize what I have said so far. Number one, from Alim al Amr came the existence of Alim al Takhliq. Alim al Amr, everything is immediate, spontaneous, kun fayakun, immediate. Just like Wahi, revelation, Wahi, revelation, Quran is spontaneous, it just came spontaneous. So, anything from the unseen, Alim al Amr, then from there Allah created Alim al Khalq, our creation. But before Allah created our physical creation, Allah created our spiritual creation. And He asked all of us there, Alastu bi Rabbikum, am I not your Lord? So, our ruh, something inside us, this is the point, one of the major points I want to make. Something inside us already knows Allah. Something inside us already desires Allah. Something inside us already loves Allah. But you have to, you know if there's a jewel in the ground, you have to dig it out. It's like that. The life and the experiences of life and culture and all these things are like dust that have come, that have, that have, that have uh, piled up on top of that that you can say jewel but you have to find that jewel within you this was Iqbal's idea of khudi the self, finding your health, higher self not lower self, not baser self finding your higher self you know, anyway, please come forward relate to us because to transform to change to become better one of the key things that you have to have is a future self in mind I will tell you what I mean if I want to become a very good jogger if I want to run a marathon I have to envision I have to see yes I'm actually doing it I'm not going to do it unless I see myself do it I have to envision a better self of mine to be able to accomplish the goal. We live in an age when you compare ourselves, when we compare ourselves to the attributes and the qualities that the angels have. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, 
فلا تذكروا أنفسكم هو أعلم بمن اتقى Don't think you're pure because the problem is what are the qualities of the angels that Allah mentions? I want to mention two. There's so many qualities Quran mentions. Of course one is they're doing tasbih of Allah and Allah says they never get tired. They do tasbih of Allah they never get tired. Another is they obey Allah no matter what Allah says even if they disagree. Shaitan disagreed and the angels disagreed on the creation of man. Both of them disagreed. Iblis also objected. The angels also objected. But the attitude between the two, this is the same thing Allah said, this are the same things within us. فَأَلْحَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا Man carries within, him, within himself the drive to do, be good, to be better, to be perfect. But also the drive to be worse and worse and worse. Both of these forces are within us. Every one of us is potentially Fir'aun. As one poet said, I am Fir'aun, I just don't have his army. Had I had his army, I would have been just like Fir'aun. I don't have his pretensions and his army and his money. Had I had all that, maybe I would have been no different. Each one of us is potentially Fir'aun. Each one of us is potentially Abu Bakr. Potentially. Anyway, if you don't see a better self of yours, a better Muslim, if you don't, you know, one of the one of the traditional ways was people got themselves attached to pious people. People would get attached to pious people. Why? Because they see a better future of themselves in that person. <laughs> oh, I want to be like this sheikh. I want to be like this pious person. And you start copying that pious person and you become the better person. Our problem today is we don't see a better self. We're just happy with where we are. If you're happy with where you are and you run, want to run a marathon, you're never going to do it. You have to see a future self of yours to become better. This is the question that I want to leave you with. I want to only mention two qualities of the angels. One I already mentioned about Iblis and Iblis and Malaika, the attitude that they had, the difference in their attitude. But now I want you to, to understand this very dramatic scene in the Quran. Probably one of the most dramatic scenes, I mean the, all the scenes in Quran regarding angels are very dramatic. But this scene that I'm going to paint for you right now from the Shura is very dramatic. And you'll get a good idea of their attitude, the attitude of the angels. And compare this attitude with yourself. Because our future self for every one of us should be, I need to be like an angel. Allah made me better than an angel. Like Abu Bakr said, why should I not wake up earlier than the birds? Because Allah created me better than the birds. If Allah created you to be better than the angels, then you should actually be striving to be better than the angels. But to do that, you have to know what their qualities are. Even though, like I said, anthropologically, and in terms of what Carl Jung, the psychologist, calls the, 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 uh, the archetypes of the human mind, the idea of the angel has always existed. So anyway, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, uh, now this is the angels. Allah says, تَكَادُ السَّمَاوَاتُ يَتَفَطَّرْنَ مِنْ فَوْقِهِمْ Allah says, it is as if as if the seven skies are going to just burst, burst. Why? Because imagine the angels, they're looking down. They're looking at the human beings. Look at what he's doing. The injustice he's causing. This is so wrong, what human beings are doing. Allah is not going to let this be. This is going to all be destroyed. How is Allah, Allah in, in fear that maybe Allah will destroy this right now? In fear, in fear that Allah will destroy the creation right now, what do the angels do? They're doing tasbih of Allah and asking forgiveness for the people on earth because of the wrongs that they're doing. And they can't believe, the angels can't believe the drama that they're seeing of the human world the injustice and the wrongs that are being committed. 
And so they're asking Allah, please forgive them. Allah, because they just feel like this whole universe will be obliterated by the wrongs of the human beings. This theme comes in Quran in a few, a few places. تَكَادُ السَّمَاوَاتُ يَتَفَطَّرُنَ مِنْ فَوْقِهِنَّ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ يُسَبِّهُونَ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّهِمْ وَيَسْتَغْفِرُونَ مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ أَلَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ But no, no, Allah is غفور الرحيم. And then Allah says, Allah has allowed this corruption to occur in the world just as when the angel said 